Hey guys. Welcome back to MM Revived. The film opens in Iraq around 2007. After President Bush declared an end to the ongoing war between Iraq and the United States. Despite the war being over, U.S. Army Staff Sergeant Matthews and his spotter Sergeant Alan Isaac are sent to a pipeline construction site in Iraq's ruins. They're there to keep an eye on a notorious enemy who's been killing every American working at the site. They've already spent more than 20 hours under the scorching desert sun searching for the suspected sniper. After waiting patiently for several hours, Matthew becomes impatient and insists there are no Iraqi soldiers on the premises. He then sees the scattered bodies of workers and concludes that the site must have been attacked by a group of Iraqi soldiers who withdrew after completing their mission. Isaac hears this and tries to calm Matthews down, coming up with the theory that all the workers were shot in the head, so there was a professional sniper behind them. He also states that he can take action against a professional Iraqi sniper named Juba. However, Matthews dismisses his opinion, stating that no Rocky sniper can kill all the workers within 30 seconds. In the next scene, after waiting for several more hours, Matthews' patience finally runs out and he decides to inspect the location himself. He reveals himself from hiding and carries his things. He then orders Isaac to cover him from behind and walks towards the construction site. Matthew quickly approaches the construction site and finds the bodies of soldiers and workers. He receives a radio from one of the dead soldiers and moves on. Isaac, meanwhile, has trouble tracking him down as his mission becomes unclear. He immediately tells Matthews, but Matthews berates him for not changing in time even though it's broken. In response, Isaac reminds him that the scope belongs to one of his deceased dearest friends, Dean, with various sentimental values associated with it. Matthews then inspects the bodies and is surprised to see everyone dead with full headshots. He begins to worry about the possibility of a sniper nearby and informs Isaac about it. Hearing this, Isaac suggests leaving here as soon as possible. Despite Isaac saying so, Matthew stands in the middle of the lot, trying to figure out the possible directions of the shot. A sniper finds Matthews and shoots him in the stomach. Seeing this, Isaac rushes to help his colleague who is running in a zigzag pattern while dodging bullets. However, before he could get Matthews to safety, he himself was shot in the leg. So he manages to jump behind the wall, leaving Matthews on the ground. Meanwhile, Matthew and Isaac suggests contacting the base and calling the backout and rescue team, while Isaac notices a gunshot wound in his right leg and tries to tie a belt to keep the blood from spilling. Shortly after, he grabbed the radio pouch and tried to contact the base, but the radio wouldn't pick up the frequency. Further investigation reveals that the radio has been hit by a bullet and the antenna is completely damaged, making it impossible to call for help there. At the same time, Matthews is going to find and aim the sniper. Isaac tries to stop him, warning him that the sniper will shoot him again if he moves. Despite this, Matthews makes a failed attempt to reach out to his sniper rifle and passes out midway because of pain and blood loss. There is nothing more Isaac can deal now. So he decided to use his time to remove the bullet from his leg and bandage the wound. Isaac then passes out as well. In the next scene, Isaac regains his consciousness and notices noise coming from his wireless headphones, apparently an officer on the base trying to connect to him. Isaac was pleased with this and immediately sought support and medical care. As he continued to speak, he became suspicious when an officer asked him to reveal his whereabouts in order to deliver medical supplies. Hearing this, Isaac replies that the action violates protocol. Then he noticed the man's accent and realized he wasn't an American officer but the sniper on the other side who has access to the radio frequencies of American bases. Even with the sniper's cover blown, he still asks Isaac to keep talking. What he wants to know. At first Isaac denies his request. However, when the sniper threatens to shoot Matthew again, Isaac agrees. He tells the sniper to go first and sees this as opportunity to map the location on the ground. Try to calculate the possible positions of the sniper. After a pause, the sniper tells Isaac that he is just an ordinary Iraqi citizen trying to save his country. The sniper then asks Isaac about his family, but Isaac refuses to answer him, claiming the question is too personal. Isaac also taunts the sniper, 
saying that he is killing people who are actually trying to develop the country. When the sniper hears it, he just laughs and replies that he knows the money is for the United States, not to his country. When the sniper threatens to shoot Matthews again, but this time Isaac fends off the threat. In response, the sniper reveals what he knows about Dean's death. This shocks Isaac, and he wonders where the sniper got this information from. Moments later, he tries to drink water from a bottle, but the sniper's shot leaves a hole in the bottle. He says he did all this to make sure Isaac couldn't leave the place. The sniper goes on to tell Isaac that he will be dead by morning because his knee is bleeding profusely. In the next scene, Isaac is trying to figure out what weapon the sniper is using. He also calls the sniper a terrorist, but the latter just laughs and reminds Isaac that he's the one who's killing people with guns in a foreign land. After looking through the scope for a while, Isaac finally realizes that the sniper is hiding in a pile of garbage. Isaac analyzes the grim situation over there and concludes that the sniper is a professional and also states that he is Jubo. Upon hearing this, Isaac tells the sniper that he must be the U.S. Army officer who later betrayed them. The sniper again dismisses the claim and informs him that he just kills the people who attack him first. Soon, Isaac collapses to the ground from dehydration and exhaustion. Then the sniper tells Isaac that after he dies, he will cut the skin off his face and sticks his tongue into his chest. Some time later, Isaac plans to trick the sniper by sticking his helmet and jacket to a wooden pole. Unfortunately, Sniper do not fall for that. Isaac loses his helmet in the process. Isaac is left with no choice as he commits suicidal run to a nearby deceased soldier to see if there is anything useful in his bag. However, after returning, he finds the scope has been damaged and can no longer be used to locate the sniper. Meanwhile, Isaac senses a disturbance in the radio signal and realizes that Matthew is actually alive. He yells at Matthew and tells him where the sniper is. Matthews takes a glossy emblem from his pocket and examines the trash heap. Matthew slowly charges into the rifle as Isaac tries to distract the sniper. At the same time, the sniper reveals that he was a teacher in Baghdad. However, after his students are killed in an American attack, he decides to avenge their deaths. When Isaac does not answer for a while, the sniper threatens to shoot Matthews, oblivious to the fact that he's alive. Isaac then reveals that he is wearing a scope in memory of his friend Dean, also revealing that his mistake led to Dean's murder. Meanwhile, Matthews puts down his gun and aims blindly at the garbage pile. He fires several times, but when he tries to reload his gun, the sniper fires back. It hit him straight on the shoulder. Because of this, Isaac suggests Matthews crawling towards him. Unfortunately, before he could reach Isaac, Matthews was shot in the back of the head and killed instantly. When Isaac sees this, he says he's broke and wants to go home. The sniper also tells Isaac that he will not really shoot if he really wants to. After a while, the sniper asks Isaac why he's still there since the war is over. Isaac pauses and replies that he's there because it was actually him who killed Dean. Isaac then confesses to accidentally shooting Dean while trying to shoot a sniper. He also states that he lied to everyone about Dean being killed by an enemy sniper. And as he talks to the sniper he hears a nose coming from the radio transmitter. He immediately crawls to the radio and tries to contact the base. But, unfortunately for him, the radio is so damaged that he can only listen to the conversation and cannot call for help. Suddenly, he hears a sniper calling for help from the base using his name. Finally, Isaac finds out that the sniper has been in constant contact with the U.S. base, asking for additional assistance. He tries to interrupt the conversation, but fails each time. In the next scene, Isaac wakes up to find a crow picking at the wound on his leg. He manages to pull out Matthew's sniper rifle and takes aim at the sniper hiding in the trash pile. Just then he noticed a helicopter approaching and pushed down the wall in front of him to reveal his position. The sniper also tries to find Isaac, but is unable to find him due to the dust from the collapsed wall. After getting the sniper's location, Isaac also takes a shot but cannot confirm if his shot hit the target or not. To find out he gets up from his position, but surprisingly, he is not shot by the sniper. Then he believed that the sniper is either dead or hurt. A helicopter soon lands behind him and soldiers carry him on a stretcher. Isaac tries to fill them in with the hiding sniper but the cops are unable to communicate properly. 
After the helicopter takes off, the sniper suddenly starts shooting the soldiers one by one. Before Isaac can warn the soldiers about the sniper, the pilot is shot and the helicopter crashes. It crashed to the ground, killing everyone on board. In the final scene, the sniper calls an American soldier base and requests another rescue party disguised as an American soldier. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button. To help us out also leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.